Um, this is the second of our online uh, meetings for selling online. And I found this article I meant to share last week. Uh, I thought it was pretty good. It came from the Star Tribune on May 3rd, and it's called uh, COVID-19 Forces Local Brick and Mortar Retailers to E-Commerce. And it just kind of goes on to talk about how oftentimes businesses have been planning to do more with their online marketing and online selling, and, and they just never get around to it. And I've, I've actually heard a number of businesses say that. Um, even with Zoom, a lot of people said, yeah, we wanted to start Zoom meetings, but we just never, never did it. And so um, uh, he, he kind of talks about that. He says that online shopping has increased by 40% since the pandemic, um, according to a study that was done. And um, you know, more people are driven to websites now because of the pandemic. But he kind of goes on to say that uh, people are probably going to continue to shop online. And so all the more reason to um, to increase your online presence. Uh, there's a lot of shops, I know some of the ones that are on here today, that it's it, it's important to be at the shop. I think of Carol and Renee's businesses, they have cute little boutiques that it's really, a lot of it is all about the experience of going into the store and, you know, uh, being there in person. So I don't think that'll end by any means, but um, it's really important to increase our online presence. So this is, as I mentioned, the second of, um, of a few. We, we're for sure going to do four of these. We hope to do more of these webinars. Um, the HRA EDA sponsored it because of some of the things we had just talked about that came out in this article. Um, we also have opportunities for all of you for one-on-one -on -one time with Ann Tracy. Uh, maybe when you leave here, you hear some good information and then you get back to your computer and you want to set it up and it's not as easy as it looked when Ann talked about it. So um, so we, the HRA EDA is offering 20 sessions so we can have 21 hour sessions with businesses. And um, actually the SBA Small Business Development Center like this idea and so they're going to help fund some of those and so we can almost double uh, the number of those sessions. So please take advantage of it. So we do thank the Small Business Development Center for being a part of this. Um, we'll send out, I suppose after this meeting, we can send out the registration in case you wanna sign up at this time. We'll be doing it for a while if you wanna wait until another session that um, you wanna listen to and then have Ann come out, you certainly can do that. And so I'll just kind of move ahead. Um, today we have Ann Tracy again and Ann has worked with a number of businesses and organizations on technology. Her business is called Tracy Information. Is that right? Tracy Services. Information Services. Services. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and Anne has had experience working, with, she's a librarian by, by education, I should say, and she's also had jobs yeah. at universities. There we go, there's our librarian. <laughs> And she's also worked with a number of businesses um, it, through Enterprise Minnesota, and she just listed a few other places, and I, I can't <laughs> find my note on where else she worked. So I'll, I can let Ann talk about that more as she goes, goes through. Here we go. Um, she works for Blandon Broadband as a consultant, and she writes a blog for them on broadband. Uh, she worked with Minnesota, uh, University of Minnesota, MRNet, St. Kate's, just um, has a great wealth of, of training and working with businesses to help them up their websites and their online presence. Um, and did you want us to go around and introduce ourselves? We have a small- I would love that. If people just introduce themselves and said, you know, where you are, or what you do, kind of help. And, I can start. I always forget to introduce myself. I jump right in. Yeah. <laughs> I think I know everybody though. Nancy Hoffman with the Chisago County HRA EDA and I'm kind of excited about this as well because Sarah and I just updated our website here and we want to include Facebook and use more of social media along with it. So um, so not only do we want to provide this for you, we're, we're, 
we're excited to learn for ourselves. John? Uh, John Dolan, Post Taste Business Solutions here in North Branch. Basically a uh, pack ship and print, large format, uh, small format, um, office supplies, and just kind of kind of the only one around the area. So okay. just like to increase, you know, I, 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 we've got some, I've got my graphic designer does some of our social media stuff, but it's just kind of, as she has time and just want to make sure that, that she's optimizing her time when she is doing it. Yeah. Holly? Um, I'm Holly Schaubach up in Rush City. Um, we have Chuckers Bowl and Lounge um, and Jerry's Auto Repair. We sell auto parts online. So, mm -hmm. Jill? Hi, Jill Bolajack, Rush City and uh, Bolajack Group. We do uh, business consulting and they do a lot of business coaching, uh, w mainly with real estate agents around the U.S. and Canada. So, um, just looking to increase my awareness of um, online marketing information. Nice. Thank you. I said, could have, I have two girls who go to school in Canada. I could have used you. I had to talk to their, the, for some reason, I think because there were two daughters and he, he didn't understand. He was saying, so you pay your daughter's rent? Like, well, they are in school, but I had to talk to the landlord for a lot longer. And I thought, let's have some different rules up here you know yeah. it's just it's a, I, I you know you try to explain well it's really cheap to go to college that you know hard to hard to pay your tuition when you're going to school or pay yeah. your rent when you're going to school and yeah. working at they both have jobs but you know you the juice the juice bar only really pays so much yeah <laughs> all right sarah uh yeah hi i'm sarah i work with nancy over at the chisago county hra eda uh, like she said, we're super excited to learn. Um, you know, when you think your website or your social media is good, it can always be better. We we talk about that all the time. So, yeah, hi, welcome. Thanks, Carol. Hi, I. Uh, you don't want me to share a photo right now, or a. Uh, <laughs> they really do. So imagine how cute I am. <laughs> I own uh, the Oven Mitt kitchen store in uh, Lindstrom, and uh, I have not paid enough attention to social media and um, been regular with it. That's my biggest thing is like, I'll go and do things and then all of a sudden I'll stop. And so I need to have more of a, you know, look ahead plan on what I'm trying to accomplish and how to get there. Nice. And that's and everyone, right? Oh, nope, we have Renee yet. Oh, Renee, sorry. She's muted. Sorry, my mute button, unmute button wasn't working. <laughs> you don't want to see me yet either. I still have my hair up in a wet towel and yeah. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> so this is much better. Uh, I'm Renee Dable. I own In The Moment Boutique, <clears throat> excuse me, in Lindstrom. And um, my social media is, is pretty consistent, but I don't really fully understand how best to have a good web presence. So that's what I'm working on. Okay. And just one more thing before Anne takes over. Um, there was a strategic planning um, worksheet that was sent out. You might want to use it along with her conversation. So that's, that's why it was provided. All right. Yeah. Yes. Thanks. Thanks, Nancy. Yeah, I have, um, I have been helping businesses use the internet since, um, I hate to admit, I think 94, 95. Um, so I kind of, I was the one you called in 1994. To, my, my favorite question, some of my favorite questions back then, because of course nobody knew what it was. My boss wants to know if we should get a computer, a fax machine, or the internet. <laughs> you know, and now it seems so funny, but of course for many of us, I mean, I remember when I, I got hired, I had just moved back. <laughs> I, I am a wealth of, um, I mean, I have an, a master's degree in Irish literature. So believe me, I didn't, I didn't know the answer to that before I started that job, you know? So I subsequently, so since then I've kind of worked in the tech field, but I, I come at it more from a, from a literary perspective than from the tech perspective. Um, and I have done trainings like this um, really almost, almost since then. So, and 
I always enjoy it. And I have to say, I, I like to have a smaller class because you guys are a wealth of, um, a, a, of knowledge and experience too. So I'd really kind of encourage people to sort of chime in and say, I tried that, it didn't work, or that sounds like a great plan. Or, you know, if we all try this, you know, if we all say, okay, we're, we're all gonna bite the bullet, we're all gonna join Twitter, but we're all gonna follow each other, you know, collectively, a lot more powerful than you are singly. That's kind of the beauty of social. So that's why it's nice to do something that's sort of uh, all in one community. So I'll kind of jump in and I've got some PowerPoint here that we can start with. And here's my funny thing. I, I really do need glasses and I'm used to seeing myself with glasses. So it's very difficult for me to sit here and not see my glasses. I can't see my computer with them on. That used to not be true. <laughs> But if I want to see someone come through the door, then I need them. Take the glass out. That's what I, I should have, you know, that's genius. <laughs> that's genius. All right, we're going home now because no one's stopping that because that would make me feel so much better. I'm sure I've got a, an old pair, you know, I'll just pop those out. I've got a 15 year old who's got pl plenty of time to do that for me. Thank you. <laughs> That would, it's, isn't it funny how that would make me feel more comfortable? Anyways, um, so we're here for strategic marketing online. Um, there, I've got a picture of myself nearest you folks. Um, what I kind of want to, I mean, thank you everybody for telling me where you are, but I always like to start, and I don't know if people want to just sort of, you know, finish this sentence online or we can use the chat, but, you know, I, six months from now, you know, I, it's so funny because given the, at the time that we're in, you know, two weeks from now or six months from now, you know, how would you finish the sentence? I knew my plan was successful when. And I ask people to think about really specifically what, what would make you feel like your plan was successful. And I think that's if you have your follow along worksheet, it's right there. But I do, um, but I really do encourage people to share what those what that success might be. I'm going to get where I can see the chat. Anybody want to share? For you, me, you're assuming we know. Well, just and and I, you know, I should have stopped by saying I don't mean online. I mean, I knew it was successful because three more people, three people I'd never seen, never I'd seen in my shop before came through the door or suddenly I had five hour orders that I didn't know that I'd have. There's, there's a business. Oh, I think it's in, it's in Bidji, Bemidji or Brainerd. That's what I just call it. Bemidji. Then it would be, um, the guy has a meat store. Um, he's a butcher. He has like 60,000 Facebook followers. You know, that was his, but his, what he really wants is he wants to know that when, um, when he's got a sale, all the meat will leave the shelf. That, I mean, that was his mission. But to say, you know, I'm going to get more people through the door or get, sell to more people, I think actually. I'll share it. There you go. So here are some sample goals, you know, do you want to reach new people, sell more to the people that you have, you know, um, John, I know, but before a lot of people were joining, John, I know we were talking a little bit about you were doing more signs than you normally would do, you know, right. uh, maybe one of your goals is to, to remind people that that's something that you do. Yep. And yeah, we do some other consumer type items, you know, uh, canvas wraps and sublimation products that are new to me right now. So I want to get that out there. And that's a, there's a lot of them online, but it'd be nice if it could get some somewhat local sales and that type of stuff too. That's so that sounds like it's a matter of just letting people know what you're doing. Right. Exactly. You know, for, for folks right now, I think a lot of it is trying to move some of the transactions online. Yeah. You know, We've got Trucker's Bowl. I don't know if you've got if, how much food sales you're doing or food now, but you know, getting people to order online in advance, especially with the pickup. Now, 
two o'clock today, we're supposed to get more news on, on what they're going to do with restaurants and bars. But, um, you know, if the idea is either to move the customers you have online, was, you know, there was a bank, I think there, well, there are several banks that have decided a few years ago, they really, they really want to push people to use online tools. So a number of banks did a lot of training with, especially with some of their senior customers to help them better use the technology. And that was one of those where they, they especially wanted their more senior um, clientele using the online tools uh, because often those people had um, kids who had moved far away who also wanted to, you know, they had shared accounts. So it's, you know, introduce a new product. Is there something that is you kind of like John's example, doing something different? Sometimes it's getting trying to get people through the door. Like as I said, we we sold so much more ice cream on Saturday than we normally sell. You know, those cones were flying out the door. Sometimes it's more of a of a reputation, and this kind of relates to that. One of my I, one of my thing. You know, it's hard. I, I don't want to sell more ice cream cones. I don't want to, do, you know, it's because I, I do consulting, it's a little bit different. But I, I knew that I had had success when I was able to get the speaker that I wanted for this annual conference that we do. I used Twitter to stalk her. And I started liking all the things that she wrote. And eventually we kind of knew each other on Twitter. And then eventually I said, hey, would you be, you be a speaker at our conference? And she said, yes. No. They said that different for different industries and then just kind of building loyalty. I work with a lot of resorts. Um, I used to work with a lot of resorts. I work with a few resorts right now. <laughs> I, I, I made the good or bad move of kind of training, training a lot of the resorts to do themselves stuff themselves, which is really, a, especially if you're a resort, a good way to do it. Um, but they, right now what they can really hope to do is build loyalty because we they don't know when they're going to really be able to have people come in so I said if you invite people to share their stories make sure that they're all remembering you so does that help has anybody got any goals they'd like to share at this no I'm about to make stuff up for you you know <laughs> why right. oh I'd like to increase our league membership for next year. So get more bowlers to join bowling league. How do they usually find out about you? Um, hopefully social media and our website. I don't know. I, I, that's a, that's a something I should probably know. Word of mouth. Usually their friends, you know, like if, their friends bowl, you get one person that knows about bowling league and then they invite their other league members and then they just know because they bowled. That was kind of, the, that was the answer that I thought that you'd say. I mean, it's just, I mean, it just seems like yeah. any, you know, any, I, you know, I do trivia because a friend did trivia. She brought me in and I enjoyed it. I to your team. Yeah. 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 That's, that's how that's, you need one strong um, kind of a joiner and an organizer to do a team and then they invite, you know, then they do the rest of the work for me, but they need to be tied into or buy into wanting yeah. to have a bowling league team. So. so for you finding, finding ways to get the people who, you know, get people to follow you and then have them share out to their friends. Right. You know, so that's good to know. Pictures of people having a good time at doing league bowling. I mean, it's, yeah. And you are on all those tools. Yep. Anyone else want to share in the chat or out loud? I, I want um, to sell a site in our one of our industrial parks. One? Ma many sites in a <laughs> <laughs> fresh all city, of them. fresh city. Uh, maybe there was one site that was haunted and that's yeah. the one she wants to go. <laughs> One at a time, I suppose. I don't know. Yeah. I yeah. Than one. Or all at once. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, is that I, when you do that, are you hoping to reach somebody local? Are you, you know, somebody statewide, somebody anywhere? Are you? 
we often try to work through our, through uh, commercial realtors. All and right. So we do have memberships with. Um, we have online information with real estate associations, but we could push it out more, you know, and I'd like to see it pushed out more um, yes. to drive them to our website to see what we have and to call us. That would be a good, yeah. Well, and I, as I think about it, my dad has car washes. You know, and, and when they find a new site, it's usually, it's very, very often through the lawyer or, oh. you know, through, through the, well, or through the realtor or through the lawyer, you know, somebody, business person that they have there. But Accountant. I, should, I should say my, my dad and my brother, my, but my brother will drive around. So, it's, so try, but I think you're right. I think trying to work through the, the commercial real estate people is probably the right way. That might be a twit. And I'm just, and we'll, that might be a Twitter thing. And I bet those people are on Twitter. And I think maybe LinkedIn, if I could get in the right groups. Yeah, even better. I think that that's a, you know, <laughs> it is funny because either you're trying to get to a lot of people or you're trying to get to a few key people, you know, and I, I, I always kind of affectionately try to get to those few people. You just have to stalk a few. <laughs> no, but it's easier for me to think about it. It's more like friendly stalking, but oh my god. Well, Anyone you else? Go. Yeah. Go to the stock. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Any feel like Bueller, anyone? Anyone? All right. But just as I said, just for yourself, sort of think about it. And I I think that the well, <laughs> what I'm not I, I am not as, as hippy dippy as I look. I always have to sort of remind, I'm like, I do eat meat, thank you, um, with, my, with my long hair. But I, I think there is something about visualizing it. And part of it is really, it, is it really does. If you think, I really, you know, I really do want to sell that, that one haunted property. I really do want to get rid of those three-armed sweaters or, you know, whatever it is. I really want to do that. That helps you really kind of focus specifically. And I think if you focus on something specific, I do want to reach more league vote, league bowlers. Sorry, I can't for me to not say voters, league bowlers. <laughs> um, because it's hard to market to everybody. It's easier to market to a, a, a subgroup, you know, especially with, so I, this, the follow-up to that really is how are you going to measure those goals? And this is one of those, that which gets measured gets done. You know, and it helps you kind of recognize, okay, I, I said that I wanted to, you know, <laughs> I said I wanted to sell more lunches. This week I just was gonna do whatever I could do to sell more lunches. I said I was gonna introduce people to this new sign product and I wanted to sell three of them in the first month. You know, whatever is, is practical for you. And sometimes it's a matter of, I, you know, we want to get as many Facebook fans as we can. We want to get as many, you know, it, it, trying to get more people to follow you is, um, it, it's kind of a no brainer. And I think I used this example last time I, we did a, wanted to grow a Facebook group for this um, business that did educational, um, nutritional educational materials. And so we offered, if people sent us their address, we'd give them tattoos. And we went from about 200 people in the group to 5,000 when we finally pulled the plug and said, stop, stop, stop. And that was great, but they weren't, they weren't the target market necessarily that we wanted. It was, it was great because all of a sudden we became somebody that other, that partners we wanted, wanted to partner us because this is probably, this is, it was at least five years ago and probably closer to eight. So 5,000 Facebook fans eight years ago, that was a, that was a ton, you know, it was a lot of, it still is, but especially back then it was. So we, we were able to parlay that into something, but I think really thinking about measuring those goals. If you reach those goals, you know, you've done well. I mean, it's, and here's one of the things I think about some of the social media. We, everybody always wants to swing for that, you know, getting 4,800 followers in a minute. You know, why wouldn't we? Who, who doesn't want to have the video that is seen a million times? It's, 
to think of a, yeah. A friend of mine's son was on one on a national sports highlight thing because he was, he was up to bat and he took a ball took a ball in a bad place. We'll just say, but somehow his friend had caught it on video. Well, you know he's there's a million hits on this poor this poor kid, but God love him. And he finds so interviewed on national television and he had to say, well, "I'm not that sporty, but I am a national merit scholar." <laughs> way to make the most of you know we all kind of want to have those but it's really the base hit base hit base hit that will get you where you want to go more often than not you know you don't want the league bowlers for one night you want them for the year you know so so but i here's i mean if anybody wants to share how they're going to measure those goals those are great but i think it's really having it for yourself and knowing that you're going to check that So, Anne, would you say it's usually a number? Yeah. It, yes. It usually is. It isn't always, you know. If what you want is to get this speaker, that's, you know, it, it might be something like that. But for a lot of people, it's... it's a or, dollar or a number. Yeah, or, or it's, you know, I want us to be so busy that we're staying open till eight o'clock again, you know, <laughs> and that's the, but give folks just a minute and we'll kind of go on to the next. Oh, and then, you know, I think the next thing is really how can you make them, how can you make that happen? And I think, yeah. Here are, I mean, I just wanted to offer people some suggestions. You know, if you want to reach new people, I think that's where looking at online advertising is kind of the quickest, easiest way to do it. Whether you're doing Google ads for your website, whether you're doing Facebook ads, you know. And with most of the advertising, certainly with Facebook and with Google, um, you know, you can say, I want them to be out of these three zip codes. I want it, you know, I want it to be women ages 18 to 27 from this zip code. Oh. We're this close from being able to say, you know, who wear red shoes and are left-handed. I mean, you can really kind of be very specific with what, what you want to do. So advertising can be a good way to go. Is there a, is there a way to, to um, sponsor tweets, Twitter? Yeah, you can promote. You can promote yeah. tweets on. Okay. Yeah. The other way I would say to do that is to get to those influencers. So, you know, that, it's, that's kind of a fun, it's a, it's, it's, it's a fun one if what you want is for local people to bring more local people in, you know, as opposed to if, um, uh, I, you know, if I made purses and suddenly I want Kim Kardashian to tweet about me. You know, people get paid big money. A uh, Kim Kardashian gets paid a lot of money to tweet a picture of your purse. <laughs> I mean, that's, um, but, but that's kind of how, I mean, that there's advertising where you contact Twitter and say, I want to advertise this. I want to promote this. And then there's paying some, you know, then there's um, product placement <laughs> with somebody like that. But product placement with people, you know, is more fun because the truth of the matter is you say, all right, whoever brings in the most new league members this month, uh, you know, free pitcher, oh, free pitcher of beer for, or, you know, think of something like that. What would encourage the people that you do know to bring in their, their, their friends? And that's, Kind of with move online, I mean, that, that it's, I, I left this in there, even though, I mean, it's all, and this, this is one where the rules are all different now than they were six months ago than they were six years ago. Things are moving online because people have to move online. They, you know, the rules of getting into the shop are, are different. But I think part of it is making sure that it's easy online, offering deals online. I did see, um, here in the city, Chipotle had free um, delivery for a while because I didn't, I, maybe you couldn't 
have Chipotle delivered before. I don't, I don't know if it's something new for them or something they were pushing, but of course what that was, was a way to get people set, buying burritos, but not coming into the store. You know, so you think about, and you, and you sort of go, yeah, you know, you're going to take a loss for a while about it, but once people start getting used to it, it, you know, in my world, you can have pizza deliver. I mean, you know, from where I grow up and even here in St. Paul, mostly you can have pizza delivered. Well, if suddenly Chipotle was on my list, but I knew I could have, you know, tacos and burritos delivered too, that, that you know, you're building habits. So you think about what we'll do it from that time. Here's the new product. I think that's where having people review the product. You know, it's... Um, where I get my oil change, um, I, <laughs> I, I like that guy. I like that guy a lot. I, he, I like him because I used to drive a really old Oldsmobile. And he finally had to say, I'm not fixing that Oldsmobile one more time for you. You need to get a new car. I was like, thank you. I appreciate you telling me that or I would drive this into the ground. But he did my oil change and he said, here, I'm going to give you two free oil change for next time if you review me on Google. You know, so if you have a new product, find a way where would a review on Google is good. It kind of depends what the, uh, you have somebody say, yes, um, you want the glow in the dark, happy graduation poster. That's fantastic. You know, I'll give you a 10% out a discount or, you know, your next sign for free, whatever makes sense for that. If you post that on Facebook and tag me, you know, and that's where having a community, I think, you know, you probably know a huge percentage of your customers. I mean, that's, that's true in my neighborhood, but if I drive five miles that direction, they are not necessarily going to know me. Uh, and yeah, it, you know, it's worth a free trial if you can get to the right people, get people to review it. Uh, yeah, with shop traffic, uh, well, right now I think it's, it's managing the traffic as much as trying to get people to come through to the, to your location. So that is where listing the hours, listing any rules that you might have. They said, you know, do you require that people wear a mask? Do you require that people sign up in advance? Even if you have that on all of your social media, if you have a website, I would encourage you to have that on the website because for someone like me, that's where I'm going to go and look. And unfortunately, right now, this weird time that we're in, um, you, don't, you know, you, you don't, you don't want people getting mad at you about it. You know, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing we can do about what's going on around us in some ways, but at least make it as easy for the people. With the reputation, uh, you know, encourage the reviews, write articles, and have them posted other places. And again, this is where it's kind of um, fun to have a community of people because if you know, you know, if you know the shop next door to you has a newsletter that they send out that um, send out electronically or send out even in the mail, they have it and they're they're going to do their spring edition. Maybe you could say, hey, I you know I'll 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 pay ten percent of your postage if you let me write an article in your newsletter. If you let me mention this new product in your newsletter. Or you might say, okay, all of these five shops or the whole community, however you're going to do that. That's a great way to do it because you can, or you write an article for me, I'll write an article for you or, or put advertising in it, you know, just, you know, one picture of whatever the, the product would be. But that kind of, that, you know, that's, that's a good way to reach the people who are, you know, they're, they're geographically, you're reaching the same people. So even if this is all men's hats and this is women's fingernails you know whatever whatever that is they're they're still going to have some women who get their fingernails done might date men who have wear hats i mean you just think about it from that perspective I have a little bit of but and loyalty this is a big one i think now um because as i said for many of us the making sales is difficult right now um and it's this resort that i'm working with it's just Find out who of your, you know, this is the sort of resort where people come starting, you know, they, they come every year starting two generations ago. 
I said, you get a short list of anybody who's graduating this year and you post their picture with permission on your Facebook page. That's going to do a long way to building up some loyalty. In Red Wing, there's a baker who just agreed to make 800 cakes for free to end all these graduating seniors. I don't know what the cost is for that, but I know I read about him. You know, so that's the, and God, I mean, I'm just maybe a super generous guy, but that certainly worked out. You know, you got some, he got some press in the cities and, you know, Red Wings, what, 45 minutes away. So it's, you know, and I think right now people are kind of keeping track of, oh, I'm going to go back there when I can. I'm going to order my next cake. There. So there are some ideas. It kind of depends on what, you know, what your goal is. But you can see where having something that you want to count <laughs> makes it easier to say, okay, this is. And I think in some ways, you know, especially so my dad has a car wash. He's got somebody who does a lot of, somebody who works for him, who likes to do a lot of social media stuff. Well, some of it is useful and some of it is not. And, and that sometimes you get lucky with social media and sometimes you don't. But if you have some specific goals, you know if you're on the right track. That's what prevents you from, you know, posting pictures of your cute dog every day unless you've got a, unless you sell pets. Hey, Anne, I have a quick question. Yeah. Um, going back to like the Google reviews. Um, first of all, is it, is it possible to like have a link on your website for like Google reviews so you can say like, hey, review us here. And yes. then is that something that you would want to do? Yes, you can do that. I, you know, yes, you can. I also still see that a lot with TripAdvisor. So, and that's more, well, and that may be for Trip, TripAdvisor's not, you know, not just for hotels and for restaurants. But I was, it's funny, I hadn't thought about this in a long time. Um, I got to go to Alaska for work many years ago. And the last night, we kind of realized we were no longer on the we were no longer on the client's dime, so we stayed at an entirely different motel that last night near the airport. But God loved this one, and it was fine. It was, you know, it was just a no-nonsense kind of a place. When we checked out, the woman handed me a slip of paper and said, please write a review on TripAdvisor. You know, so, mm -hmm. I, so in the online world and in the offline world, encouraging people to do that. Okay. Yeah. Like that's especially you know i where you guys are a lot you, that's how when i do a road trip well they're, they're a little bit the girls are too old now but my dad and i used to take the i have three girls on a road trip and that's how we'd pick lunch every day my dad would say okay i think we're going to be to savannah i'd look up trip advisor and i'd pick a restaurant in savannah through you know so Good question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So here are some of the, you know, how, how can we do that? I mean, I think first you want to think about who you want to reach and what we're going to do here in about a, a slide or two. I wish I could, wish I could remember my own slides is we'll sort of take a look at all of the social, not all, but the main social media channels and kind of what, look at their demographics, who's using them, why they're using them, and some of that. So I'm hoping that will be helpful to folks. But who do you want to reach? What do you want them to do? Do you want them to buy something? Do you want them to invite their friends, come to the next party? Do you want them to know you have a new product? Uh, you know, try out the new product. Do you, do you want them to share the information with somebody who's probably not on? As my brother affectionately calls it, the face. My brother will never be on the face. So if somebody wants to reach him, they better reach me first. Um, but uh, because he uses it for work, the what YouTube, it's the only thing he cares about. YouTube, it's the only, it's, it's the only sort of social media channel that he pays attention to. Um, you know, what should you say? And we'll get into that. Here's the funny thing, I can't see my last, okay. And when should you connect? Both, you know, what time of day? Here's the super, because I looked at it a little bit. 
during the work day right now, since COVID hit, that's the time to hit people. That's what they're, that's what they're saying. Um, it used to be more eight o'clock at night, but now it's, I think the, bu the busiest time kind of for any social media channel, more or less, maybe not, um, is Wednesday. It's, oh, it's perfect timing. It's Wednesday, Wednesday from 10 to 11. So as soon as we finish up here, you guys can post something right away and see how it works for you. <laughs> but we'll look at some of. So I'm going to, yeah, I was, I, I was close. I thought there was one more slide. I'm just going to get myself some more water if you don't mind, but you guys can take a second to think about this and then, yeah, see, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't live in the mansion. You probably think I do. I'll probably be exactly 10 seconds. Oh, good. That was funny, Sarah. You and I kind of sat down at the same time from different angles with our stripy shirts on. No, you, you reminded me I needed water too. So I was like, okay, <laughs> we're doing this. <laughs> this is my new kick. I'm just, <laughs> you know, about every other day I pick a new health thing. Like I'm going to try to be healthy about this. And about three o'clock I say, give me the cookie. But today <laughs> it's water. I drink Diet Coke and I drink water, not in that order, but I'm changing my, changing my ways. So does anybody have, before we, what we will do is kind of take a look at all the different social media channels. So I hope that that's helpful, helpful for folks, but I, but I really kind of encourage people to stop. And if you have questions or ideas, or I mean, at this point, if anybody has any goals they want to share. And in some ways, the nice thing about sharing it is that somebody, you know, somebody will have a, a genius idea like take the glass out of your glasses. I'm really honestly going to do that because that will make me so much happier. Okay. Okay, Facebook. Facebook is the most ubiquitous kind of of all the different channels. I should have done, I'll do a little hands up poll. How many people here are on Facebook. I gotta, I gotta scroll down to see if I can see everybody. Oh, nice, nice thumbs up, Carol. <laughs> That's good. I mean, I think, oh, hi, hi, Jim. We got a new, a new person there. Um, you know, Facebook is, is the most ubiquitous, except if you wanna reach, you know, the 13 to 17 year olds. As I said, I have three daughters from 15 to 21. Only the 21 year old is on Facebook. The other two, one <laughs> begged and begged and begged when she was 13. She's not on it now. It's heavily female. People on Facebook tend to check it every day. And yeah, most of those people. So these are the sort of folks. But again, with Facebook, um, with most of social media, using a picture when you do a post is helpful. As I said, that what I was surprised to learn is that the that best times to post right now are really kind of during the workday, like from 10 o'clock to six o'clock are the heavy times if you want to have engagement. I will say it used to be that um, if you wanted people to see your post, post it at noon. If you want them to interact, post it, you know, at eight o'clock at night. This might not be the right time for this question, but um, can you do a quick um, answer to what is the difference between a post and a story? Do you know that? Yes. Offhand? Okay. For yes. Post yes. On here. Yes. If I share my screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am sharing my screen. I th and if this isn't appropriate, you can answer it later for me. I don't know if other people are need to know that or not. Well, and I'm looking to see how that shows up. 
Oh, because they've changed it with rooms. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so these, the darn, usually it used to be the, the stories would be, oh, here we go, stories. So the stories are, you know, they, I, and I think that they're the same with Facebook as they are with um, Instagram. Instagram has been built more on stories, just sort of, it's funny to say traditionally with the social media. Um, yeah, this is the dangerous thing. I have to say my, because now you can see my friend Brendan, what he had. God love Brendan. He is a friend of mine, brothers, my friend of mine's, my brothers. Um, and he is on some serious painkillers because he has cancer. So I'm just so there, whatever. I, I'm not even going to look to see what he's posted there, but he usually posts something delightfully inappropriate. Um, we, can't, we can't see your screen. Oh, either. good. Oh, oh, you can't see the screen. Mm -mm. You can't see the. We're we seeing the slide. slide. Mm. If I, then I'm not going to, I'm going to. But now we want to see Brandon. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Stop sharing. When I was close. Okay. Now, if I share it, this, that's funny that I have to, um, all right. Yeah. Now you want to see <laughs> who wouldn't want to see him. He is. All right. Now, can you see my Facebook? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So here are, okay. Now this will make a lot more sense now that it's right in front of me. If I scroll down, I can see what people have posted. Yeah. As I said, God, the Brandon, um, so it's always a little dangerous. I'm going to focus now on, on Anita. She'll have, a, I was like, she'll have a cute mom picture. You know, these are, and you have to scroll through to see them, but they, they stay on the site. You know, the, you can get an archive of them. I can see all of the posts that I've done for the last, whatever, 10, 15 years, however long I've been on it. The stories you click here to, to access them, they're much, not my own. That was, well, musician friend of mine she'll have things that are pretty they're usually i'm sure if i they're usually much more visual you could include i think you can include audio with it I'm, yes definitely can include audio with it they they don't last as long so now we're kind of scrolling through these are the stories of people that i know and so i'll watch these like i I've never really they, are they popular? Um, they, I think that they're popular right now because uh, off when somebody I hear when somebody I know does their first story, or if it's somebody who doesn't do stories on a regular basis, I will get a notification of that. So the first time that you do a story, it's likely that your uh, followers will get a notification of that. So there, so there's that. It's something they're trying to push right now. You can see they're trying to push rooms. That's right at the top there. I think rooms that that's new, and I think um, the the intention is to have people use Facebook instead of Zoom. Mm -hmm. You know, with stories, that as I said, that kind of comes from Instagram. And do you think that's uh, driven by? from snapchat is the story more like a snapchat where like snap like snapchat or like instagram either of them okay but I, what i think what's kind of funny is in, certainly snapchat is for a much younger audience instagram i think isn't basically a younger audience too so we'll see how this ends up working for facebook because i think it's and because i think a lot of us are like what's the story you know mm -hmm. Oh, because my daughter posted something on the story she's in her, uh, yeah, she's suddenly, she is all over plants. So she, and immediately I get a call from my mom. What's the story? Why does Lily have a story? Do I think I have to comment on it? Is she going to feel bad if I don't comment? I, you know, I think it's, I don't know that stories is going to take off too much for Facebook. Because my mom, my 70, you know, it, it's it's not it's not intuitive if you're not on Snapchat and if you're not on um, Instagram. But I could add to my story here, and and as you see, they're just much more visual. 
either in a video on, you know, with audio or with a picture and they will promote it just a little bit more. They'll do the same still with some of their live video. They'll still promote people's, they, Facebook, as you know, they change their algorithm all the time. It turns out that they will, um, they will weight your posts or your stories or your videos based on what they want to see, you know, what do they want? They know they've been more successful if more people are doing more live video. So they will make that happen by pushing it. And the same with stories right now. So there might be some advantage to using stories now. I don't know that I would make that the mainstay of a, a long-term campaign. Okay. Plan. Okay, now I'm, there we go. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, there's, there's nothing better than having your mom and your kid on Facebook because I hear everything that Lily does. Did you see what your daughter posted on Facebook? No, mom, I have more than eight friends. I did not see what she. <laughs> she did. Lily had a friend she would, who would log in as her and post some. <laughs> <laughs> my 21 year old when she was 18 her friend would always log in as her and every single time good news I'm pregnant like mom for the eighth time <laughs> her friend does that every single time it is funny but she's not pregnant um so that's some of the some Facebook I think I'm just so I've kind of told you the time I think I've told you. I, 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 I'm I trying to think of some of the really good uses of Facebook that I've seen. Well, I, I think in the end, whenever you're posting anything, you, you want to post things that people want to share and or you want to post things that convey information. You want them to share it because they think it's cute or they think it's, funny or something like that. There's also that kind of sense of belonging. When you can get people to share your story, obviously that's when you're able to reach more people. Hey, and you Anne. Can you, sorry? And this is Carol. Can you share I, the screen we're looking at? Can you help us understand these percentages? So for gender, does, oh, it, sure. does it mean 75% of all females are on Facebook? That's what they're saying. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you for asking that. Yeah. I was like, at first I'm like, wait, 75 and 60. 63. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> not <laughs> Something's wrong there. Something's yeah. wrong there. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll, we'll sneak now too. We're looking at this in a little different way. Dun, dun, dun. I think I've, yeah, I've only included this for Facebook, but so the, here are, here are the peak times to post for Facebook. The solid purple times, those are, that's, that's during COVID. The stripey purple times, those were the peak times before COVID. So mornings. I don't think that's for us. I don't include this for, for each of these channels, but they, they're fairly similar. I think that the one outlier was kind of LinkedIn. It's funny because LinkedIn hasn't changed that. Well, I'll get to that when we get to that. It hasn't changed that much. Instagram, anybody on Instagram? A couple. So here you can see the big difference. If you're trying to reach people who are under 30, you might want to think about this one. You know, particularly if you're looking at reaching people who are, uh, you know, 13 to 17. Instagram is tricky because they make it difficult to link back to any information. 
you know, often with, with Facebook, what, you know, I might link back to. So one of the things I do is I write music reviews. I used to have a radio show. I, now I do music podcasts. I get, get to interview Charlie Parr tonight for my music show. I'm very excited about it, but you know, one of the ways that I, and it's one of the ways that I promote it is I usually provide a link from Facebook to um, the art, to my website where I've got the article. When I do that on Instagram, I, all, the best I can do is I post a picture of, post a picture of me and Charlie, which is not quite as exciting when what it's a Zoom picture, you know, but I post the picture and I have to say link in bio. Instagram is increasing in popularity. It's really all based on pictures. There were enough people, it's really made to be used on the phone. I will, do people want to see what it looks like? I'm looking for, someone will have to shout out and say yes, and then I'll show, but otherwise. Yes. Yes, okay. And I, I'm going to show it because it's, <laughs> I'm, I'm not this good. I can't show it on my phone. I'll show what it looks like um, on a computer. So this is not the optimum. find it um I was like now I've lost my zoom meeting yeah this is a cheerful one um it's this is a, she's a, she's a singer. I'm sure this is a performance. Um, oh, here's fight. Here's <laughs> mostly Minnesota. That's actually I, my, my co-host does our Instagram, but this is the guy we interviewed the other night, but it's all pictures. I will like that so that she can, there's just a little bit of a comment. She does a lot more comment than I might do. There we go. And you can like it, you can comment on it, I could send it, I could, I could, you know, send this directly to somebody else, but I, oh, this shared Twitter is kind of new, but they, and there are a lot of people who are on Instagram only. But and where's the bot, where's the bio that you referred to? <laughs> you know, I'm going to look at somebody else's. So if I click to, here's the bio for, and here's where the link is to the site. Okay. Thank so you. you always have to take a, another step to do any actions from Instagram, it seems like. Yeah. I mean, here I can click to the, this is your, this is your link just in the bio, which to me is very frustrating. But as I said, there are a lot of people who are only on Instagram. So it's, but if um, you had I have a quick question, I don't know if you, can you hear us over here at yeah. Sign Insurance? Okay. So we're on both Instagram and Facebook and, uh, I, I I'm, I'm 30, I'm on Instagram and I see kind of what some of these, I guess, quote unquote influencers do. And it looks yeah. like they kind of, they'll post a photo and then they do write a lot of content on there. Yeah. Um, you can share those things to Facebook too, but it seems like on Facebook, things that are wordy just don't go over as well. Um, I, I don't know. I guess my question is, uh, is that, is that correct? And then, um, you know, should we be trying to do more than just like a tagline photo or should we be really be trying to post a photo and then getting really specific about like almost making it kind of like a blog or something on Instagram. Yeah. On Instagram. And yeah. then, I don't know. I guess maybe if you could comment on how that translates or transitions over to Facebook, if we should be considered like if we should be posting the same stuff on both or if we really should have our Instagram content and then our Facebook content and then something different for LinkedIn um, or if they all, you know, I don't know. You don't I'll want you, you don't want you don't want my answer. 
<laughs> you should have something and there are uh, there are tools that you can use and you can even set it up through through i can set something up so that if i post it on facebook it'll also share on instagram instagram is a good example you can post it on instagram and then it will post to twitter as well and, you know where you, you kind of automate things there are tools one of them is called hootsuite I put, I write one message, I include one picture and it'll broadcast to all of my social media channels. That's better than doing nothing, but each channel is different enough that I would try to do a separate one each time. The, with Instagram, it's like Twitter, it's very much all about the hashtag so that there are people who will just follow a hashtag. So one of the, I walk a ton, um, and I like street art or art that I find. So I, one of the tags I use is street art. That's how I, that's how I get new followers. You know, if you, um, I'm trying to look at, you know, um, you know, uh, you could, your tag could be up, you know, oven mitt. And so anytime you see an oven mitt, you do hashtag oven mitt and hope that you kind of build that up. So some of it is that putting, putting more content in the, um, on Instagram, sorry, I'm trying to keep myself straight. On Instagram, makes sense. For some of those influencers, they're making sure to get the hashtag, they're making sure to get the tag. So the hashtag is, you know, the the, the old fashioned number sign. Um, and you can do searches um, or follow hashtag on Twitter or on Instagram. So that's when they, and then they tag. So when you tag somebody, and I'm assuming people kind of, mostly know this you tag someone that means so the mostly minnesota post um she probably she probably should have tagged me and herself so that people can see that we're involved with that you know and that that's what you can do in a long post is you're kind of hoping to get you're hoping to get to those keywords the for the influencers uh and the influencers can be any number of uh uh it, it, as I said, it can be the it can be the person who has the bowling league. It's whoever gets ha, has access to the people you want to reach. You know, as I said, there are the obvious ones like the Kardashians or Ashton Kutcher or some of those people. You know, and then there are just the more local, the people that are most useful to you. With um, yeah, and as you said, with Facebook, it's it's more picture heavy. You can put some comment, but as people reply more or respond more to that that picture. There are people, so if I'm looking at the, all right, I'm gonna share the screen again quick. Mm -hmm. I'm, gonna share the, I'm gonna share the screen. The idea of me doing it quickly is, so if I go back to, sorry, I'm, all the buttons are getting in my way here. With Instagram, there are people who will work really hard to make sure. So this is when you look at somebody's bio, it's a long story. Um, but my co my co-host is the only social media. She's not she's she's not very technical, and this is what she wanted to do. So this is what she does. Um, People work on making sure that the, the bio, the page, that these pictures, they really focus on how that's gonna look, a lot of them. But yeah, the bad news is it does make, a sen make sense to, uh, so there's, you can follow the tag. So here's what's funny, because I tend to, And then if you want it, you can see how many people liked or not liked, you know, it's. But it's, so here would be a place if you had products and especially if you have products that are very visual, posting them here and kind of getting them to attract people would be good. But as I said, the one tricky thing is that people who are on Insta, there are many people who are on Instagram only, or they're on Instagram and maybe Snapchat and some of the younger ones. And what a lot of people will do is they would take a picture like this and then, you know, 
superimpose some letters that say, you know, sale on Saturday. You know, so a lot of it is conveying information in the graphic too. I'm kind of looking at the time, so I'm going to. Sorry, now I've got eight different windows open and I'm trying to get back to the. Trying to get back to the Zoom. There we go. Okay. Oof. Uh, I have one more quick question for you. Yeah. This is, uh, we're over at Stein Insurance. So just curious if you have any good examples of uh, like small businesses that are more professional services that you think do a really good job that maybe we could take a peek at and steal some ideas. I don't know if that's if you're, if you can do that or not, but uh, if you could, that'd be awesome. You know, let me think about that on Instagram or on any of these. I don't know. Just anyone that like, uh, you know, we're, we're insurance. It's a little bit different. We're not, you know, we're not selling, right. We're not retail or something. It's a little less visual in, in a lot of ways. So I, I guess that's always kind of a challenge to me is, you know, what's going to be interesting to people what's kind of related to insurance, but like not so directly that people feel like they're being bombarded with advertisements. So we do a lot of stuff like advertising the general community and being good members of the community and stuff like that. But just curious if, I don't know, if you've seen some kind of unique ideas for other businesses that are in the professional services. Yeah, let's look, let me keep that in mind. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna yeah, try to pull them from the, so. examples that we look at next the next tools because I, I as i said i'm also looking at time um yeah i think talking about what you do in the community is a big one that kind of builds some of the loyalty and that and if you can um if you sponsor the local baseball team let people know that um, and that's where I think, you know, getting permission to, or, or invite the kids to do that. Anytime that you can get, um, people will share pictures of their kids, you know, and let people know that that's some of the good work that you do. I uh, worked with somebody who was a um, financial planner and she really wanted to base a lot of things out of her email list. Um, and what I think is always getting an email an, an email newsletter if I know that there's a coupon in that email newsletter that's going to help me read it a little bit more well she's a financial planner so a, a coupon didn't make it didn't make much sense you know what, what is she going to offer so what she ended up doing is she talked to the local businesses and got them to offer a deal that she offered it put in her newsletter so that for them that meant that new readers would find out about them for her that meant that there was something at the bottom of each newsletter that she was able to do so sometimes it's a matter of lifting up people who are uh, um, uh, lifting up your partners, lifting up people who will, will say good things about you. But I think it's, there we go. There's also things like Twitter. And Twitter, I think if you share articles, if you share information on Twitter, that might be a good way too. Do you sell insurance to, to individuals or to businesses? I don't know. I don't know if you're on mute, but. Yeah, they're on mute, but I would say both. <laughs> both, okay. You know, I, I think it's kind of, I think it's building up the relationship. Sorry, I don't know like, if you were talking to us. We, we kind of missed it. Apologies. Oh, no worries. No worries. I was just asking but about. Can you repeat it? it? Sure. Sure. With, an, with insurance, I think if you sell, well, I was asking if you sold to, you know, to individuals or to businesses. Yeah. So we kind of do both. Uh, the social media stuff, it, it feels like it's definitely more tailored to uh, connecting with people in more personal insurance, personal lines, individuals, uh, businesses. It's, you know, I don't know how active they are really on social media in terms of like following. I, I don't know. Anyways, I, I think we use it more to, for our personal insurance kind of stuff. Then I think it's just a matter of, from when it comes to the personal stuff and the insurance stuff is sharing the, the community stuff that you do, as I've already kind of said, I think if you want to reach more businesses, then 
Twitter is one. And if you um, so work with a guy who does a lot of, of HVAC work, and that's sort of thing, I sort of say, find out, you know, for him, it's a matter of saying, I would love to get these five companies. And that's where I say, awesome, then let's start following them on Twitter, get to know some of those people on Twitter. And he would like to know sort of their facilities people. So we try to find on Twitter and then, and again, I'm looking at the time, so I'm going to do a little LinkedIn. If you provide services to other businesses, I would say take a look at LinkedIn if you're not already on. I'm surprised at how many small businesses aren't. And the thing about LinkedIn is you, it's, it's one of the few social media channels that I think you can set up and kind of leave to cook on its own. It's maybe not best practice. But get in there enough, try to connect with as many people as you can. If you want to be more active, that is where you start sharing articles, you know, sharing articles, sharing any kind of updates. There are groups that you can join. And you can join a group of people, and I'm, I'll use this as an example, but I think people can kind of extrapolate from it. Um, you could join a group of people talking all about insurance, or you could say, you know what, what I really want to reach is I want to reach people who, uh, who do HVAC work. You know, that's the kind of insurance I'd like to reach. The, join those people. And you join it and become a little bit a part of the community, even if you're more of a lurker, you know. But if and when anybody does ever ask like, anything about insurance, you know, I don't think you want to go in there and say, I sell insurance. Can I talk to any of you guys? That's, that, that seems like a bold move for something like LinkedIn or really a lot of these social media channels. But joining those groups of people that you know that you'd like to reach. So the other nice thing about LinkedIn is that, you know, they, it's, it's like Facebook for businesses. So you, you will get connected to anybody you want to, if, if you spend the time to kind of find those connections. And by find the connections, you just put in where you went to high school, where you went to college, you know, whatever teams or sports you're enjoying doing and, you know, find, find different things to, about yourself to post in and then let the algorithm work. They'll say, you know, if you went to Johnson High School, you probably know this person. If you went to the University of Minnesota and did this degree, you sort of, you probably know those, know this person. But I think for a lot of people, if they're looking for insurance, LinkedIn is a place that they go. All things being equal with insurance or with a lot of businesses, we'd like to go with somebody we know. You know, we, we know and trust the people we know. So LinkedIn would be the one that I would really strongly encourage. And that's one where it's, it's business, business, business. You know, if you sponsor the local baseball team, you can certainly post it. But it's the that you have keen information on on how COVID is infecting, <laughs> affecting um, insurance. That's people want to know that you're kind of on your game that way. Twitter won't connect you to people in the same way that that LinkedIn will. It's more of a it's it's more like. Instagram for words, but that is where you can use the same hashtags. You'll see it's a lot fewer people, you know, 21% of females, 24% of males. And I actually did a survey about five years ago and 13% rural, 22%, but you can see the numbers there. Um, but Twitter is good for saying, I want to reach these five companies. I want to reach these five people. I'm going to I'm just going to warn you that I'm online, kiddo. <laughs> I, she's not usually up this early. Um, so that's the that's a quick quick nutshell, as I said, a lot that, that pertains to in terms of posting for Twitter is the same as for Instagram. With most of these, you want to post I think I said last time, but I, not, maybe not everybody was on. The shelf life for a tweet is like two hours. So when it comes to something like Twitter, you can post a lot. As opposed to Facebook, you only want to post a few times, maybe a week or most a day. Here, email newsletters. Email newsletters is a good way to reach out to the people 
that that are your customers tried and true you know and here it's been consistent so we're looking at stats from 2015 to 2018 here you know if anything the delivery rate has gone up is gone up even the open rate so you send out a newsletter and it goes to every i mean i think people are pretty common with, with that there are a couple of different there's mailchimp there's constant contact exact target are three companies that that do that that will send those newsletters that will that you can use to send your newsletters but the thing about it i think is you want to take a look when you send those newsletters and figure out what is it you want what's going to be the definition of success when you send that out when you send that out do you want them to call you when you send that out do you want them to visit your website when you send that out do you want you know one guy he uh does catering and then he sells lunches and we send one out every week it's a quiz if you know the answer to this quiz you get a free drink or a free cookie or free chips we alternate that but he says it's funny every you know people come in for it they often come in the first or second day that he sends it out um what i write the blended on broadband blog so it's probably it used to be 50 posts a month. Now it's about 120 posts a month um, because of the COVID stuff, because there's a lot going on there. And we probably get between two to 400 visits a day on that website. But if we send a newsletter, it's going to be more like four to 600. I mean, it's emails, newsletter. If you If you've got something to say, if you've got the time for that, that's something that I would encourage people to take a look at too. Now, as I said, I'm looking at the time, so I'm going to whip, whip through some of these. Pinterest, you want to reach women. I, I think when I think of Pinterest, I think of people who are redoing their home, and I think of people who are getting married. You know, if there's someone who wants to know more about that, just send me an email. <laughs> And again, I'm kind of saying that in time. I used to see a lot about Pinterest. Um, what I do know is that back in the day when people used it, they they made sales off it. You post your new your new uh, shoes on Pinterest and you'll sell them. I mean, I, it worked for people, but I don't hear as much about it as I used to. Um, we've talked a little bit about Snapchat already. If you want to reach people who are young, <laughs> Snapchat is, is a good way to do it too. YouTube kind of depends on, I. while people have time, I, I think that it is, uh, I'm about to go down a rabbit hole. Uh, video can, re can be compelling. Um, and especially if, you know, if you have something like insurance or you have something where, uh, you know, there, you have something where you have a, a, a kind of a longstanding relationship with your client asking them to do a video, um, testimonial that you can post on your website or post on social media. I think that would be, especially if that, especially if it's another business. I mean, it's, it's nice when you do business to business um, interaction because anything that lifts you up is gonna lift them up as, as well. So thinking about it from that, from that perspective. Um, I, people watch video, you know, so if there's something, if there's a new product, and it's something that would make more sense to demonstrate. Do a video, it's easy. Do the video, post it, and then post it to your website or post it to any of these social media channels. We'll take video fairly easily. How professionally or how how professional do you think that needs to be? Like when does it hurt you more than help you? I or does it? I don't know. Okay. Uh, you know what's funny is um uh I think of my, my my dad who had a had a car phone when I was a kid. You know my and I'm old. You know my dad had one of the first car phones, but he would claim and he works in computers. Worked in computers. He'd say these the quality of these cell phones they're never gonna they're never gonna take off. That quality is terrible. The quality is still terrible. We all use them. 
And that, that's a little bit the way that I feel about video. Now, if you, if you have the funds to do an awesome video, do it. I think that it's fantastic to do that. But otherwise, it depends on the situation. You know, doing a quick how-to video. How many of us have watched, you know, how to, how to make a face mask videos that you think this, you don't even notice the quality? I think if, you have, if the content is there, people won't notice the quality, which means if you are conveying information that people really want to know, the audio is more important than the video in most cases. You want to be able to hear people. You know, I don't care so much if you're fuzzy, but I want to be able to hear. I, I do want to be able to hear you. So I think that there's a, I think people are very forgiving in terms of that. Um, you just, you want to make sure to watch it first. You don't, um, you want to make sure people are watching it for the right reason. Like I, you know, <laughs> I'd hate to be doing a video here and all of a sudden my 15 year old walks out in her pajamas and I don't realize it. And I've got the best video in town because I just had a 15 year old walk, you know, <laughs> and you want to watch for those sort of things. You don't, you know, some dog has just caught a rabbit in the background. It's, you know, that, was, that is the funny part of a documentary I watched. And of course it's, that was not the focal point. So I, if the content is good, I think it's it's there. That being said, I mean, I, I think if you have somebody who can do good video, that's fantastic too. A time and a place. So that's my brother. Uh, I, so my brother is a car wash with my dad. They also, um, they now do, they fix up car washes and they install equipment. So he, you know, he takes video like this of them installing equipment. <laughs> He realized that he needed a soundtrack because it turns out that people who install equipment sometimes drop the F-bomb. <laughs> so that was the one thing, but people watch it because people want to know how that works. And the truth of the matter is, is the people watching the video, they don't, they don't care if people drop the F-bomb, but even my brother's like, uh, seems a little, you know, but if you're conveying information, if it's fun or if it's informative or if it's, you know, you just want to make sure the audio is good enough to hear. And then, <laughs> yeah, so I, there's my two cents on that. And I'm going to super quickly, I will, and this kind of ties in, just make sure that it's, I think a video that's you is an end and shot, you know, shot by your kid or shot by who, you know, whoever uh, is, is, is more endearing than something that's professionally done and doesn't seem like you, you know, and I think that that's true for all social media. Find your voice. I mean, the truth of the matter is, is Billy took the F bombs off some of those videos, but not all of them. That's him. You know, and he's, and he's working with people who are building car washes. It's a different, you know, it, they're not selling ice cream. That's, I think taking a look at what your competition is doing. So you can kind of see what some of the norms are, but you can also, you get good ideas. I mean, I think that's in the same way when you open your business, you kind of checked out how much people were charging for what you do. You just, you want to know what the ballpark is there. And then listen to your customers, especially if you've got, um, reviews. So that's, um, but that, is there a, I, this is, this is kind of, and this is a, this is a bonus slide, so I won't say too much of it. Myself, I find it's easiest to use my website and then use the content from my website to push to other channels. I, sometimes this happens automatically. I will say, so this landed on, you know, I write a blog on broadband that all of those articles automatically post to Twitter and to um, LinkedIn, because I'm not going to make any changes to them. So I appear to be very, very active on LinkedIn. It's just all of the articles that I write automatically go there. Um, but for me, having that website is the main place where all of that content is going to happen. Um, I helped a friend of mine opened a homeless shelter three months ago. She's big on Facebook, big on Facebook. And I said, I'm going to build a website for you so that you can have all of your content there. And it took her a while. There are two things that I pushed her to do, but have this website. And I said, you put it on Facebook and I'm going to put it on your website for you, which however order this is going to happen, that, that makes sense. 
that's nice because then she has an archive of it because not everybody is on Facebook and people wanted to see about the time the governor came to visit two months ago. Well, if you're scrolling through Facebook, it's hard to find that. So if you've got information that like that, the other thing that I would push her to do is I said, if you get news, share it, share it now, <laughs> you know, it's don't wait for the perfect day for it. Don't, don't wordsmith it to that. And this kind of gets to the video too. Don't wordsmith it today to death because it's called news for a reason, you know? And the couple times that we jumped and shared some news and she, she's like, ah, it always worked out in the time she would say, I'm going to save it until I have the time to do it. Right. Those posts never happened. She is a perfect one. She's going to write about, um, when snow starts falling, she's still waiting to do that. It is a perfect post, but it's, you know, the day's gone. So that's, so there's a rushed, uh, but you've got your sheets there to kind of, you know, talk about, as I said, that finding a, knowing what the definition of success is and how you're going to measure it. Because once you have some success, that, that makes it easier to want to do again figuring out where your people are, figuring out the best time. As I said, that what they say that the best time right now is that 10 to 11 o'clock in the morning, but kind of test it and see what's working with your people. You know, pick the channels that make sense for you. I think if you, picking a theme, I think always makes so if you know you're going to have the lunch specials every day that gives you something to post every day if you know you're going to do a special every tuesday that gives you something to do every tuesday you know so think about it for the long term one resort what we did is we just picked took a picture of a tree every day through the fall just posted that on social media and people could see the and then at the end of it we had you know 30 how 30 pictures of the tree it was super fun to have you know but no matter how how silly is each each year you're or each year each day or every other day you're going to feature one of the local high school seniors and say something nice about them you know something that call, goes for a series <laughs> something i started years ago on accident i will i'm kind of a i walk 10 to 15 miles a day um, and I take pictures when I do, and I post them, and I'll just say on Facebook, you know, what I saw on my walk. I, and and it's funny because I've I, and I've lived in a lot of different places. Now I'll see people will post and they'll tag me and say what I saw on my walk in Belfast, what I saw on my walk in Chicago, what I saw on my walk in Texas. You know, something that. And obviously, I didn't. You know, I, this is just personal. It's not. But if you do something like that, that that shows you, that gives your voice. And then you can do it on whatever, whatever channels make sense. I, you know, I mostly, I do it on Facebook. I do it a little bit on Instagram. I, on Instagram for a while, I was saying what I saw on my walk and then the wisdom of the sidewalk, because for, you know, and this started whatever, two months ago, all the kids in my neighborhood had fun things that they had written in chalk on the uh, sidewalk. So I'd show a picture of that. It's, you know, we can get through this. We're all in this together. And I, a friend of mine in Minneapolis posted what he saw on his sidewalk, which is just a bad word, but he tagged it, <laughs> you know, wisdom of the sidewalk. And I said, well, we live in different neighborhoods, you know, it's very, but when you see somebody kind of riff on what you're doing, you know, you're onto something, but doing something like that does just makes it easier to come up with more content. Gives you, gives you a reason to do that. The success and then coming up with some series using your own voice and now i'm looking at it and now i'm six minutes over thank you for sticking with me and i thanks, hope Dan. that yep no i just said thanks oh, oh okay yeah so if anybody has any questions um and well, yep. is it possible to get copies of your of your slides yeah i'll post i'll post the slides um, and I'll post the video. Uh, <laughs> and you're gonna, you guys are gonna be so jealous because I have a two-hour Zoom meeting starting at ten, so it might not happen right away. <laughs> but, well, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, yeah. 
and should we kind of um, mention that we also are putting up the um, the videos on our chisagocounty.org webpage. So as soon as Ann gets that to us, we'll get it up. So it'll be a day or so. So you're welcome to go back and if there were certain things you missed. And please tell others to go to the website and watch it as well if they're interested in upping their um, website presence or their online presence. Um, right. Also, if you're interested in one-on-one um, -on -one with Ann, please let us know. Uh, it's a great value. Uh, that you can get for free. And so um, we will send out a registration form for that so you can sign up. We want to kind of track things because we do have SBDC involved now and, and even for ourselves. So I think Anne has a poll here. So yes, if you'd be interested in a future topic, we kind of delve into this is sort of an, more of an overview. But. Any, any others? Well, I don't get the poll because I'm an admin. Oh. And you can only pick one, it looks like. Oh, shoot, I set it up wrong then. If you know you have a topic, just put it in the chat or let Nancy know. Yeah, I, sorry, I should have said that. I should have posted this a, a minute earlier. Okay, getting some. All right, if you can only post one, then we're good. I'm, there we go. Share results. And now I don't, I don't see what you see, but. Facebook. All right, so we could look into some Facebook or some web development search. We took web, we took web, and web development and SEO might even go together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we had uh, planned on having our next one in two weeks, this time on a Thursday. So it is, I believe, uh, June 4th, at same time, eight o'clock. Um, we just feel if we can get, get people to do this before they get too busy in their day, um, they'll have the more likelihood of, of coming and staying through the- You want, you want to ask? I'm just curious. <coughs> oh, we're on. So you can- Hey, Ann. Yes. I have a question for you. So with web development, if you were to do your own website, which platform would you recommend like GoDaddy or GoNerds? I, um, you know how I'm going to say this, how I'm going to answer this. I use, I use WordPress as the platform that I use and GoDaddy is the host that I usually use. That being said, I'm 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 being sold a little bit on using WordPress.com. So WordPress is both a content management system and a host. If if you don't think you're going to make many changes to your website, then I might just go with WordPress.com. Otherwise, I and I've just been happy with GoDaddy. I think a lot of them are good, but I'm I am a fan of of WordPress. Okay. Our platform. But I hear good things about Square. I, I work with so, yeah. And then I work with a lot of really old legacy things that I won't recommend to you, but people have had their website for years. But I, Word, I think WordPress is, it's, it's pretty easy to use and it's, it ties in well with a lot of social media. So it's easy to embed a video. It's easy to post things from different resources. Kind of like Bueller, Bueller, any questions? Feel free to email me anything too. Um, I will look for, if you, if you send me an email, I will look for the insurance, some good ex examples of insurance. Well, thank you, thank you. This is a fun start to my day. As I said, now I've got two hours of, Broadband task force. Just make you guys jealous. <laughs> I'll let you go and update me. <laughs> I will, yeah, well, I will. <laughs> Thanks so much, Anne. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. There we go. See ya. Bye. <laughs> Yeah.
There we go. I don't know that we have to figure out what our topic is. I